Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camels stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Ridge and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes. Tonight's guests, Sally Eilers and Alan Hale, Warner Brothers star of Adventures of Mark Twain, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. What's all the excitement? Oh, Ab, it's a big circus. Just came to town. And I've been out watching the parade. What a parade! First came the elephants, after them come the clowns, and after the clowns came the beautiful Lady Godiva on a big white horse. What? Wait a minute now. What came after Lady Godiva? Me and every sailor in California. Oh. <laughs> Costello, aren't you a little old to be following parades? Oh, not me, Abbott. I'm crazy about circus parades. I love those big elephants. Quote, some people like to be firemen and squirt water through their nose, but I like to be an elephant and squirt water through my nose. Unquote. All right, never mind. Look, never mind the circus. Boy, did that lay. All right, never mind the circus. <laughs> Look, never mind the circus. We have other things to do. Oh, yes. Yes, but I can't forget about the circus habit. I come from a family of circus people. You... My Uncle Rallo was the world's greatest tightrope walker. Yes? Until he broke his neck. Well, how, how did he break his neck? One night he was tight and the rope wasn't. <laughs> Zip! Neck! Crack! Oh, I see, I see, I see. Then I had a, um, another uncle. He, he was six feet tall. He used to stick his head in the lion's mouth. What's his name? Now we call him Shorty. No. <laughs> All right, Costello. I, I've heard enough. Let's change this stuff. Jim. Oh, Abbott, you're talking about the happiest days of my life. What fun I used to have in a sideshow. I always used to tickle the tattooed lady with a feather. You tickle the tattooed lady? Uh, what for? To see moving pictures. The moving <laughs> pictures. <laughs> But she finally had to leave the circus at it. You mean the tattooed lady quit? No, she had her face lifted and it threw all the pictures out of focus. <laughs> Costello, now don't try to kid me. I don't believe you were ever near a circus. Oh, yeah? Well, here's a picture of me taken with a Ubangi girl. Let me see it. Wait a minute. I see the Ubangi girl, but I don't see you. I'm sitting in the shade of her lower lip. No. <laughs> Look, Costello. Just what did you do at the circus? I used to train the wild zebras. You train wild zebras? Mm -hmm. Now, don't make me laugh. You don't even know what a zebra is. Oh, no. A you... zebra is a black horse with Venetian blinds. <laughs> well, hello, fellas. Oh, it's Ken Niles. What's cooking, boys? Nothing's cooking, Niles. You brought that aroma in with you. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll cut that out. Say, Ken, Costello was just telling me that uh, there's a circus in town. Did you see the parade? Uh, indeed I did, Bud. I know all about that circus. In fact, my lovely wife helped bring the circus to Hollywood. What did she do, pull one of the wagons? <laughs> now look here, Costello. You can't compare my wife to a horse. You're right. Her ears are too long. Uh, <laughs> Costello, will you be quiet? <laughs> What did you mean, Ken, uh, about your wife bringing the circus to town? Well, Bud, my wife is co-chairman of the big Hollywood Benefit Carnival and Circus. Mm -hmm. She's been up every night preparing for this big carnival. That's why she has those little crow's feet under her eyes. Little crow's feet? Brother, those crows must have been wearing baseball shoes. <laughs> oh, I heard that remark, you overgrown hippopotamus. I said it for you to hear, you uh, take it easy, Costello. What are you wearing? Oh, uh, never mind. There, there's, an, there's an army man outside who wants to talk to you. An army man? What does he want? He wants you to replace a tank for active duty. <laughs> now, do you see what you started, Costello? Always fighting. Nobody will like you. Oh, I don't worry about that, Abbott. I'm the kind of guy that grows on people. <laughs> the only trouble is, Costello, a little too much of you grew on you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you sure stole him that time? Boy, yeah, you kill you, don't you? <laughs> oh, darling, you're wonderful. To me, you're the only woman in the world. Oh, and Kenneth, my love, you're the only man in the world. And you're the only woman in the world. Oh, and you're the only man in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just been listening to Adam and Eve. <laughs> Oh, stop it, please, Costello. Mrs. Niles, Ken was just telling us that you're co-chairman of the Hollywood Benefit Carnival. That's right, Mr. Abbott, and I'm asking all the movie stars to donate their services. Well, I don't know exactly what I can do, Mrs. Niles, but Costello here was just telling me that he used to be with a circus. Costello with a circus? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what cage was he in? <laughs> uh, what 
What case was I in? I was in there with the little... I wasn't in any case, kid! I used to manage somebody. I used to manage the great minestrone. He was the greatest high diver in the world. I didn't know I had to continue. <laughs> he used to dive 500 feet from the top of the tent into a pail of water. Dive 500 feet into a pail of water? Nobody can do that. He did it once. <laughs> never mind what he did. Look, Costello, never mind what he did. What can you do in this circus? For example, are you an equestrian? I'm an American. No. <laughs> No, no, Costello. Now, how would you like to ride bareback? What, in front of all those people? <laughs> Listen, you dummy. Do you know anything about trick riding? Oh, you mean... You mean, am I an equestrian? Well, uh... Oh, that's different, Abbott. I'm the best trick rider you ever saw. You are? One time in a circus, I rode two horses standing up. One foot on one horse, and the other foot on the other horse. And what happened? Suddenly, an elephant came between us. One horse went one way, the other horse went the other way. <laughs> I'll bet that was a laugh. Laugh? I thought I'd split. Ah, oh, shut up. Straddling the equator off the west coast of South America are the Galapagos Islands, guarding the Pacific approaches to the Panama Canal. To Americans stationed in the Galapagos Islands, to United States bases and outposts throughout the world, go camel cigarettes. By the million, by the ton. For camels are first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. And the camel cigarettes that reach the Pacific Islands, as well as the camels that reach you, are fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Both at home and overseas, more people want camels now. More people want the fresh cigarette, the cigarette with more flavor. So remember, if your store is sold out today, Camel cigarettes are worth asking for again. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes. Camel standard of costlier tobaccos is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. <laughs> Many Rachel in the orchestra and her many requests for Speak Low. Costello. We're expected at the manager's office. Mrs. Niles told her we'd be here. Wait a minute. Oh, here it is. Uh, pardon me, miss. Uh, we'd like to, uh... Say, Costello, look who it is. Sally Eilers. Gee, hello, Sally. My name's Lou Costello. Oh, don't bother about that. It can happen to anybody. You fellows are just in time. The show's about to go on and our lion tamer quit. Uh, Costello... <clears throat> 
Uh, do you know anything about lions? Do I know anything about lions? Of course I know a lot of things about lions. One time I went lion hunting in Africa with my brother, and I brought back a stuffed lion. What was the lion stuffed with? My brother. <laughs> and another thing, kid, you ain't getting me in a cage with no lion. Oh, but you don't have to be afraid of this lion. He was raised on milk. So was I, but I eat meat now. <laughs> when I can get it. Oh, but this lion hasn't any teeth. I know, but he could gum me to pieces. <laughs> but, Costello, this circus is for charity. You mean you won't go into that lion cage? No. Why should I risk youth, security, and beauty? Well, perhaps lion taming is too dangerous. However, you can help at one of the concessions. Come over here with me. Now walk this way. I can't walk that way. Why not? You're wearing high heels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shut up, will you please? We find out what's going on around here. Now, what do you want us to do over here, Sally? Well, Bud, you and I will stand out at the counter and sell these baseballs. And, Costello, you stick your head through that hole in the canvas. And what am I going to see through that hole? Well, you might see some uh, big stars. You mean like Ginger Rogers and Lana Turner? Oh, no, no, no. More like uh, Jupiter and Mars. What studio do they work for? <laughs> I know that Hedy Lamarge, but that Jupiter... Nah, nah, I don't know. I know, but don't, don't be stupid. Go ahead now. Come on, be a nice little boy. Stick your head through that canvas. That a boy. That's fine. All right, folks, step right up. Three balls for dime. Hit the little boy on the head. All right, folks, Three step right up. Step, step right up. up. Hit, Hit the, the little boy. boy on the head. That's the spirit. Step right up. Step right wait up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Hit what boy on what head? <laughs> and with what ball? We're talking about you, Costello. Yes. The people throw these baseballs at your head. If they hit you, they get a box of candy. I get a box, box of aspirins. No, no, no. That not first me. word was funny, wasn't Listen. it? Listen. <laughs> you know what you do, Lou? When you see the ball coming, you duck. Yeah, but suppose I forget to duck. Oh, we've taken care of that. We furnish you with a safety cap. If the ball hits you, it bounces off the cap. Yes, ma'am. But did you ever take into consideration what makes the little ball bounce off the little cat? <laughs> My head! I fight! Quick! No, 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 Quick! No. Don't be silly. Lou, you can't get hurt. Oh, no? What happened to the guy who had this job before I took it? Oh, here he comes now. Step aside and let the stretcher by. Stretcher? Stretcher? Hey, Evan, I'm going to ask this guy on a stretcher a question. Hey, buddy, did those baseballs hurt you? How does your little head feel? Oh, my little head feels fine. Oh, good. In fact, I feel absolutely normal. Oh, that's so nice. I'm so glad you came to see me, Miss Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lamar! That's all I want to know, brother. Let me out of here! Now, 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 don't be such a coward, Costello. Put your head back in that hole. And I'll throw a few uh, practice balls. Get ready now. Now, here comes the first one. <laughs> Costello, get up. Get up off your knees and stop playing with those marbles. What marbles? I'm picking up my teeth. <laughs> Miss Iders, would you mind stepping Costello. back, please? You are standing on the tooth that now, wait I use for my essence. This is for charity. Now, go ahead, bud. Throw another ball. It'll attract the crowd. <laughs> now, what's the matter? Why aren't the sirens blowing? Why should the sirens blow? There's a blackout! <laughs> oh, Costello, did he really hit you? Did he hit me? With this slump on my head, a haircut will cost me double. I ain't taking this job, Sally. Get another boy! Well, that's a fine thing. <laughs> it's a fine thing coming from you, Costello. This is a benefit, and for charity. And they need a hard-headed man like you, and you want to crawl out from under. Well, you should be ashamed of yourself. I guess I'm an ingrate. I'll say you are. You could make hundreds of people happy. Think of the fun they could have throwing baseballs at your head. But no. You're selfish. You want to quit and spoil their pleasure. I'm sorry. I'm a regular killjoy. Yes, you are a killjoy. Think of the mothers and fathers... Who bring their little kitties, little teeny weeny kitties down here to laugh at you getting hit on the head. But do you care about the kitties? Do you care about the little teeny weeny kitties? No. No, not you. I'm always thinking of myself. Yeah, I'll say you are. Oh, I'm a baby! Please don't 
don't tell my scout, Master Rummy. Well, I should. Oh, please don't. If you do, he won't take me to see the La Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> oh, Sally! Sally! Oh, it's Mrs. Noah. Oh, Sally, my dear, I just came from the main tent. The wrestling match is about to start and something terrible's happened. What's the matter? Did you forget to pull out of the tights? Did you forget to oh. get your tights or something? <laughs> what kind of typing is this? Oh, nothing of the sort. We arranged for a professional wrestler to take all comers, and he's broken his arm. We must get a substitute immediately. Someone with stamina, strength, and courage. And that man is Lou Costello. Oh. Yes, that man is... Cut it out, Abbott. I ain't gonna wrestle. My brother was a wrestler, and he got a terrible cauliflower ear. Oh, that's nothing. Lots of people have cauliflower ears. Yeah, but his is cream. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Look, Lou, they'll announce you wrestle anybody. Then I'll jump into the ring first, and we'll pretend to wrestle. That's all there is to it. i got a better idea, Abbott. Why can't I wrestle Sally Iris? Oh, but Lou, that's silly. Boys don't wrestle with girls. Oh, she's so young. Get out of here. And now here's Connie Haynes to sing a brand new song for the first time on the air. Listen to Saltwater Cowboy. Who is that great, big, wonderful man? Wearing that fine coat of tan. He's a saltwater cowboy with the whole world for his reign. Just a saltwater cowboy and the herd he rides his train. He's the rounding of his country folks, wherever they may be. He's a saltwater cowboy, a United States Marine. In a bob wide corral, he's the salt of the earth, boy, and he's long and black and lean. He's the salt water cowboy, United States Marine. Keep your pastures green. He's a lot what a cowboy. A United States. As the fellow said after he bet on Bing Crosby's horses, they're going to run all night. All day, too, and with flat feet. Yes, that's plenty flat, all right, and it can be worse in your cigarette. If wartime flatness is spoiling your smoking, get Camel. If you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, get Camels for more flavor. You see, Camel cigarettes are matchlessly blended of costlier tobaccos, blended to give them more flavor, and more flavor helps Camels hold up Keep from going flat, no matter how many you smoke. Give Camel cigarettes the T-Zone test. Your taste will prove to you that Camels do have more flavor. And your throat will give you the last word on Camels' smooth extra mildness. And remember, Camel cigarettes stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning, because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes, they're first in the service. They've got what it takes. All right, Costello. The tent is filling up. Are you all rest for the wrestling match with me? Yes, I'm all ready, Abbott. How about a look in these wrestling trunks? Wait a minute. What kind of trunks are those? What's that writing across the seat? Oh, that lights up, Abbott. And what does it say? Come to Joe's for dinner. What a spread. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, let's, let's get out there. The crowd's waiting. Hey, look, Abbott, remember one thing. When they call for volunteers to wrestle me, be sure you're the first one to get in the ring. There's some pretty tough guys out there. I don't want to wrestle any one of them swing shift workers. Why not? Because when they swing, I might not shift. Uh, 
You wait here in the locker room, Costello. I'll see if they're ready. Oh, Bud, Bud Abbott, I've got some wonderful news for you. We've got a great opponent for Costello to wrestle. I want you to meet Alan Hale. Well, hello, Bud. Where's that little meatball partner of yours? I want to bounce him around a little. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, uh, wait a minute, Alan. Costello expects to wrestle me. Oh, no. <laughs> He's my pigeon. I'm collecting waste fat. Uh, gee, Alan, I don't think Costello's in good shape. Oh, don't worry. I'll straighten him out. I think I'll go in and take a look at the body. But don't let on that I'm wrestling him. I want it to come as a pleasant surprise. Oh, Lou, a friend of yours wants to say hello to you. Alan Hale. Oh, hello, Alan, old boy. Did you come over here to watch me wrestle? Watch you? Why, Costello, I want you to feel that I'll be in there with you every minute. And tell me, Costello, have you ever had any wrestling experience? Oh, sure. One time I wrestled a champion of an Af- African tribe. <laughs> you bangy? Yeah, and he bangied me right back. <laughs> he uppercutted at me. Boys, now we can't stay in the locker room. The crowd's waiting. Okay, Sally. And don't worry, Abbott. I won't hurt you one bit. That's right, Abbott. He won't lay a hand on you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm laughing at. But after all, he is our guest star. Well, let's go, Costello. Into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, the main match of the evening. In this corner, at 205 pounds, blue canvas back. Four hundred and ninety-three pounds? Hey, Abbott. Ha! They're trying to make you look good, Abbott. Ha, 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 The Warner Brothers star of the adventures of Mark Twain, Mr. Alan Hale! Alan Hale? Alan Hale? Abbott, when did you change your name? When did you start working for Warner Brothers instead of Universal? When are you making a picture of the adventures of Mark Twain? What's the matter? Ain't we together? <laughs> <laughs> Why, they're framing me. Hale, I'm supposed to wrestle you. Abbott? Or somebody? <laughs> no matter who you're supposed to wrestle, Abbott's no match for you. He's certainly no match for you. Come on now, Costello. I'm going to slam you on that canvas, step on your gizzard, and hit you on the head so hard you'll be wearing your socks for a turtleneck sweater. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And furthermore, I think you can do it. <laughs> come, come, boys. Let's get on with this wrestling match. I'm the referee. And as the referee, there's one thing I insist on, a clean fight. I want a clean fight. And I want a clean fight. Then why don't you two guys fight? I get kind of dirty. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Pay attention to the referee. Yeah, there's another thing. As the referee, I am not interested in either one of you. I am playing no favorites. No favorites. You understand that, Costello? Yes, sir. And do you understand that, Mr. Hale? Yeah, Charlie. And tell your sister I'll be over at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Wait a minute, Abbott. Hale goes out with the referee's sister. I'm getting out of here. Get back there, Costello. Now, remember, at the bell, shake hands. I don't have to shake hands. Mine are shaking already. Be a sport, Costello. Stick out your hand. Okay. My hand. Alan, Alan, my hand. Well, I can always use it for a fly swatter. <laughs> All right, boys, at the bell, start to wrestle. Remember, one fall takes all. Costello, get in there and put up a great fight. Stop the match! Stop the match! We haven't started match. yet. I know, but I'm winded. Let's go, Costello. I'll mop up the floor with you. Oh, yeah? Let me tell you something, Hale. You show me a tough guy and I'll show you a coward. Well, I'm a tough guy. Well, I'm a coward. <laughs> get ready now, Costello. Here's a toe hold. Mm. Here's a leg hold. Mm. Here's a headlock. Here's a hammerlock. Here's your arm. Thanks. <laughs> Come on, Costello. You're putting up a terrific fight. Oh, my nose! My nose! Hey, you flatten my nose! <laughs> How will I smell? <laughs> Shall I tell him? <laughs> Keep going, Costello. Keep going. Get in there. Yeah, but... I, I think I've got him worried. He's afraid. Well, what do you mean he's afraid? He's afraid he's going to kill me. Get set, Costello. I'm going to give you a body slam. Wait a minute. Hey, hey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Costello, please, stay down there. Don't keep jumping up. Who's jumping up? I'm bouncing. <laughs> hey, Abbott, throw in the towel. Throw in 
a towel right now. Why now? I don't think I'll be around this way again. <laughs> don't worry, Costello. And now I got a little something that'll settle this whole match. See if you like this airplane spin. You ain't got no pilot's license, Hale. Let me go. Here you go. Way, way up in the air. Wait a second. Put me down, Hale. Put me down. It's round and round and round you go. And when I come out, when nobody knows. Costello. 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 Get up. The crowd's waiting for you to get back into the ring. Get out from under those seats. Abbott, I'm not going into that ring. You're not. You're talking like a coward. Where's your backbone? Yeah, Costello. Where's your backbone? I don't know where it is. And I'm not going back in there till I find it. Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight, we salute Lieutenant Colonel William Leverett of Lakesland, South Carolina, who has been awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for extraordinary heroism. Leading a flight of only seven American fighters over the Aegean Sea, he sighted 30 German planes about to bomb an Allied convoy. He attacked immediately, and knowing that his ammunition was limited, waited until he was dangerously close to each German plane before firing. Colonel Leverett personally destroyed seven enemy planes and damaged two others, while the other six pilots destroyed ten more without a single loss. In honor of you and your men, Colonel William Leverett, the makers of camels are sending to our soldiers overseas 300,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the four camel radio shows honors the Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short way to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante. Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with their guest, Miss Linda Darnell. And now, here's Abbott with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello... You certainly made a fool of yourself tonight. Now, I want you to be very careful next week with Linda Darnell. Why, Abbott? Well, you know, Linda used to be uh, uh, in the circus business and the uh, mind-reading act in Vaudeville. She can read your mind. She can't read my mind, brother. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello, Linda. Abbott, it's Linda Darnell. No. Hello, Linda. What do you know? Oh. Well, Costello, did uh, Linda read your mind? She must have. It's the first time I ever got slapped over the phone. Oh, good night, folks. Good night, neighbors. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with Freddie Rich and his orchestra and our special guest, Miss Linda Darnell. And remember, get camels for more flavor. If you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, get camels for more flavor. This is Ken Niles wishing a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. More pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the whole world. Here's one reason why. Prince Albert's no-bite treated to keep your pipe from biting your tongue. Yes, sir, because Prince Albert's no-bite treated to give you cool, tongue-happy smoking comfort. PA's crimp cut, too, to pack and burn and draw just right. The big red two-ounce package of Prince Albert holds around 50 rich-tasting, swell-smoking pipe pulls. And believe me, each one is mighty convincing proof that PA stands for Pipe Appeal. More pipes smoke Prince Albert. It's the National Joy Smoke. This is the National Broadcasting Company.